Hello, my name is John. I'm Mike Zero Juliet Alpha Victor, or as I often say, just another volunteer. We're going to explain to you today how to use the RSGB Ofcom calculator for assessing your station's EMF. The electromagnetic fields are specified in a new license condition that you must meet the ICNERP basic requirements and ICNERP is the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection and they published their requirements the most recent of which is ICNERP 2020 and Ofcom have stated as a license condition that all amateurs need to meet the basic restrictions of the ICNERP levels. So first things first, where do you find the calculator? If you go to www.rsgb.org slash emf, you can look on the page for the calculator, click on it and download. You should end up with a screen that looks like this. So the page boxes at the top allow you to enter your name, your call sign and other details about your station including the date of assessment and where the station is located. Under that are the basic things that you need to put in to define your configuration. So you'll see that there are three basic columns. First one to do with the radio setup, the second with the feeder and the third to do with the antenna. And the places that you need to put in input are marked with yellow highlighting. So for example, if I want to input the band, I click on it, drop down the box, look for what I want, which in this case is 20 meters. Then I have selected the band. You'll notice that the calculator automatically calculates somewhere in the middle of the band for the frequency then allows you to specify the mode, the transmit mode you're using, in this case SSB. That derives a mode factor, which is 20% for SSB. In addition to that, you specify the percentage of the time that you're going to talk. This is taken in a six minute limit because that is one of the two averaging times that ICNERP specifies for compliance. So having done that, I'm now going to be using on the 20 meter band, single side band, with an input of 100 watts, but you'll notice that only 8 watts comes out on average because of the averaging factors that are used. In the middle column, You've got the cable type, and you can select again from a drop down list. Well, for I actually use RG58A um, for my HF antenna, and I've actually got about 30 meters by the time I've got to the top of the garden and got up the mast. So if I put all of that in, then I can see that coming out of the feeder, my 8 watts that went into it has now dropped to 5.4 watts on average, or my peak level of 100 watts has dropped to 67.8 watts. What I next need to do is to select the antenna. So if I select, I've used a half wave dipole, then it will automatically look up the gain of that half-wave dipole and do the calculation. Now in this case, having subtracted the losses, added in the antenna gain, um, then I end up with an average EIRP from the antenna of 8.9 watts. And EIRP stands for equivalent isotropic radiated power. Now that 8.9 watts is below the 10 watt limit that is set for needing to do detailed assessment 
and as a consequence the calculator tells you that you are compliant as you are less than 10 watts EIRP. Now that won't always be the case and in fact it's simple to show that say I change my mode from SSB I press the processing button so I'm now in SSB processed what you see now is that my 100 watts becomes 20 watts after the feeder it becomes 13.6 watts but now the EIRP is 22.2 watts this is above the 10 watt limit so what needs to be done now is to let the calculator calculate the compliant distance and in this case the Ofcom formulae tell me that it's 3.4 meters so what that means is I have to keep any people that may be around at least 3.4 meters away from the nearest part of the antenna now in my case even with the um, mast at quite a low height of 6 meters this is achieved because the vertical separation which is 6 meters antenna height minus the person height is 4.2 meters that 4.2 meters is greater than the compliant distance so it's impossible for anybody on the ground to get closer than 3.4 meters if however I input say 400 watts and I decide I'm going to talk a lot more so I put in 100 watts 100 percent and I'm going to leave everything else the same still working in the halfway dipole then what I see now is that the Ofcom compliance distance which is this diagonal distance between any person who may be present in the nearest part of the antenna is now 4.8 meters because the 4.8 meters is greater than the 6 minus the 1.8 or 4.2 meters I now have to keep people 2.2 meters away from the shadow of the compliance distance in other words if you look on the ground at where that compliance distance is then I need to stay 2.2 meters away from that anywhere around the antenna um, another thing that I could have done is to change the antenna type um, one I've actually got up at the garden at the moment is a ZS6BKW this has even more gain um, so now even if I enter the true height of my antenna which is 10 meters then I'm still compliant so at 400 watts transmitting all the time in a six minute period um, using SSB processed with 30 meters of feeder a ZS6 BKW antenna with some gain um, a 10 meter mast then I am still compliant because nowhere at ground level can a person get within the compliant distance of the antenna if I went back to say seven meters for a moment then I can see I need a horizontal separation but that is slightly artificial because I'm using the gain on the bore site of the main beam and assuming that it's the same going down towards where people are on ground level now close to the antenna you're likely to have a side lobe effect let's say it's 4 dB um, so if I put minus 4 dB in there for the directivity loss then what I see is because the person is now lower than the antenna he's not being illuminated by the main lobe he's getting an EMF which is lesser due to the effect of the focus of the antenna beam and once again 
the vertical separation that I have is higher than the Ofcom compliance distance. So I could print this out and keep it as a record with some explanation maybe in this page box at the bottom that I am compliant with the requirements of ICNA. So that was an example for HF. Let's quickly look at doing a similar thing in the VHF by changing some of the parameters. So if I'm going to operate in the two meter band, I'm probably going to operate as voice FM. Um, I'm probably not going to talk all of the time. Um, so let's say I'm going to talk half the time then and normally I don't have 400 watts available so if I put in 100 watts so I'm now operating two meters vice FM with 100 watts in talking half the time so the average power that's coming out of my transmitter is 50 watts if I feed that in um, I would be using probably RG213 at uh, that setting um, I would probably have a shorter feeder cable length so now starting off with my 100 watts my average power is now 36 watts when I feed that in my antenna is still at 7 meters I most certainly wouldn't be using a ZS6 BKW because it doesn't work very well on 2 meters but if I go to say a five element Yagi, um, then what I see now is 150 watts on average effective isotropic, equivalent isotropic radiated power, and a peak of nearly 300 watts. That's coming from the gain of the Yagi. But my compliance distance is still only 3.9 meters as calculated that's that diagonal distance my vertical separation which is from the head height up to the height of the beam is now 5.2 meters and because 5.2 meters is greater than 3.9 meters i am compliant and again if i printed that out and kept the record I've done all that Ofcom require by way of an assessment similarly if I had a 400 watt linear um, then I could get two power levels coming out at EIRP level which would exceed the EMF and in this case the Ofcom compliance distance goes up to 7.7 .7 meters um, my vertical separation is only 5.2 meters, so I would need to keep people 5.7 meters away. That's assuming that my um, directivity factor is minus 4. For a, a beam like this, it might actually be closer to minus 6. So if I put in a revised directivity factor, then I come up with a much more reasonable distance to keep people away from underneath the antenna of 3.2 meters. One thing it's important to do when you finish doing a calculation is to set that directivity factor back to zero because that gives you the worst case configuration. So I hope that's shown how you demonstrate the basic calculator and we will be providing a leaflet in the near future which explains this in more detail and as with everything else you'll be able to find that leaflet at www.rsgb.org slash emf so thank you for your attention um, i hope we've shown that Assessment is not a frightening thing, it's reasonably simple to do using the calculator and we are providing further support in terms of some pre-assessed configurations which will help um, if you are in a marginal case. So thank you for your attention and 7.3s from Mike Zero, 
just another volunteer.